Hey guys, and welcome to the first episode of E-Commerce Brew, a web show about e-commerce marketing hosted by Charlie Rawl, co-founder of Video Review Labs. I'm here at Pine House Pizza in Austin, Texas with head brewer Joe Morfeld. Joe, thanks for hosting us. A great restaurant, one of my favorites in Austin. But uh, tell me a little bit about uh, Pine House Pizza and what kind of beer we're drinking today. Yeah, so Pine House Pizza, we're a brew pub here in Austin, Texas in uh, central Austin. And um, what we're drinking today is our Kama Morta Session IPA. We're kind of the first people to do a Session IPA down here. Uh, it was a style that I was really excited about brewing when I came down from Colorado. What we do with this beer is we put a lot of the flavor and aroma that you'd expect in an IPA. Tone down a little bit, obviously, with the alcohol being a little bit lower. We sure. keep some of that bitterness out, so you get a lot of bright fruit. Uh, I almost call it kind of a Fruit Loops character in the nose from the hops. Yeah and um, a nice, really uh, light backbone. So it, uh, it's a very refreshing beer for summer. And today I'm with my good friend, Ryan Pitalak, CEO of Unique Influence. Ryan, thanks for coming on the show. Absolutely. Really appreciate it. Um, thanks for having me. We've kind of worked together in the past on some videos before, and um, I know Unique Influence works a lot with e-commerce sites. Uh, you guys have some experience with startups in Austin. Um, tell me a little bit about you know, how you started Unique Influence and why you kind of work in the e-commerce marketing world and kind of what you guys do in your own words, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, Unique Influence has been around for about three and a half years now. Uh, I personally have been in the digital ad space for about 15 years. And over that period of time, what we learned was there's a lot of interesting ways to advertise online that brands can capitalize on if they're you know, savvy and trying to stay ahead of the curve. And really, uh, Seth Godin said it pretty nicely when he said that you know marketing really is trying to always find that edge against your competition. And sure. I completely agree with that. And so what we try to do is help our customers find an edge, specifically in the area of social commerce for e-commerce companies that are looking to advertise on places maybe like Facebook, Twitter, things like this. So what's kind of been, over the past couple of years, the acceptance from consumers of brands kind of coming into social media to engage them? I mean, is it an organic thing where people have embraced it over time? Is it hard to overcome? Just the kind of the, I know as we go in the future, it's getting more and more accepted, but kind of what's been your experience with that, I guess? It's an interesting question. The way that I gauge this question is uh, when I speak, I ask people how they feel about it. And so I'll get in front of a large audience and ask them, you know, raise your hand if uh, you are uncomfortable with the amount of information that um, Facebook knows about you. Sure. You know, raise your hand if uh, you share all of your uh, location-based information with apps and Facebook, etc. And the reality is the acceptance level is going up and uh, people are realizing that as they exchange information about themselves, they are going to receive personalized information in return. My philosophy is kind of like the most value brands can provide is just creating great experiences from their user interface on their website to the videos they play, whether it's for products or their advertisements, all the way down to social media. And those lines really blur there for social commerce. Um, but I think, you know, a lot of people maybe see social media, a one-off thing of where Facebook and Twitter, all these things are their separate entities and maybe they're not really building the brand, they're just maybe micro instant engagements with people but to me I mean it's a it's a long long-term relationship you're creating with people creating those great experiences um, through all these different channels and what's kind of your take on that I guess yeah that's a really good question uh, so this is really ties into where I think the future of where we're going in terms of industry email marketing tends to be the number one driver of sales for most e-commerce companies the okay. reason is that all these people have come to the website from one reason or another they have purchased obviously they have their email address so they send them these emails you yeah. know, once a week once a month and those emails lead to new purchases and all brands really realize that this is you know, one of the best ways to drive sales. So they also can get the same value out of channels like Facebook, Twitter, et cetera, and different channels where you can specifically target those customers that have purchased from you in the past. And so people need to not think about 
uh, a social channel almost in the way that they think about Google because the way that people think about Google right now is top of funnel, I'm gonna get new customers in, that's it. Yeah. While the way that people are using these social channels is at both as a prospecting tool and as a re-engagement tool. And people are typically willing to pay quite a bit to re-engage with you because the likelihood that you're gonna purchase from me in the past or, or again in the future is high. Sure. And so that willingness to pay is high compared to some other person over here who might just want to show an ad to you because you might be interested in their product. Yeah. So what that does is it increases the prices for everybody and uh, that becomes a competitive landscape in terms of the marketplace for advertising that the brands who really win are the ones that take a look at these channels and say, what is the relationship I want to have with my customer? When do they want to see advertisements from me? What really is their buying life cycle? And the companies who can figure that out based on the previous purchasing behavior and then figure out how to calculate the value of all of that. It's almost like a cumulative lifetime value that happens or a cumulative return on ad spend that happens based on all the dollars you've spent to get that customer to purchase and all of their purchases over their lifetime. And yeah. a lot of people aren't thinking about the world this way, but I can tell you when I start talking to people about it, it's something that they want. And so yeah. it's the type of thing that you know will get implemented more and more in the future. So thanks for joining us, guys, in the first episode of E-Commerce Brew. And thank you, Ryan Pitalak, so much. Yes. CEO of Unique Influence, it's great to see you. Um, tell us how we can find your company and learn more about what you guys do. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, Ryan Pitalak, uh, company name is Unique Influence, and the website is uniqueinfluence.com. Uh, if you're looking to follow what we write about, we typically write about a lot of these topics. Uh, just follow us on Twitter at uinfluence. And again, if you ever want to get a hold of me, Ryan at uniqueinfluence.com. And my cell phone is 512-826-5330. And of course, to learn more about Video Review Labs, it's videoreviewlabs.com. I'm Charlie Raw, co-founder. And you can get us on Twitter at Video Review Labs. Thanks again for joining us, guys. It's been great.